All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the ideas of mechanical advantage and mechanical efficiency. And so there are two terms that sound really similar, but we need to distinguish them because they are, they do have some subtle but important differences. All right, so mechanical advantage tells us how many times a machine multiplies the input force. All right, so this is, this is an important thing to note here, that with mechanical advantage, we're talking about force and we're comparing the force that we put in and the force that we put out. Uh, when we're using a machine. All right, so the formula for mechanical advantage here is mechanical advantage equals output force divided by input force. So a couple of things that are important to, to kind of think about here. If we have a mechanical advantage that equals one, what does that tell us about the input force and the output force? So if you want to pause the video now and maybe, maybe think about what that might mean if the mechanical advantage equals one, what, what does that mean about the output force and the input force? All right. So what that means is that the output force and the input force have to be the same. Because if we have one, right, this, this is essentially just a fraction here that we have, right? Any fraction, if it equals one, the numerator and the denominator here have to be the same, right? So if, if, if the mechanical advantage equals one, we know that the input force and the output force have to be the same. Because if the output force is five and we divide by anything other than five, it's not going to give us one, right? So if the output force is five, the input force has to be five if we know the mechanical advantage is one. So a mechanical advantage of one tells us that the output force and the input force are the same. So then let's think about what if we have a mechanical advantage that's greater than one, and any number greater than one really is gonna have the same effect here, but let, let's say that the mechanical advantage is five, just to keep using fives here. If we know the mechanical advantage is five, what does that mean in terms of the output force and input force? So if you want to pause again and maybe think about that question on your own. All right, so what, what that means is that the output force has to be greater than the input force. If we have a mechanical advantage that's greater than one, that means that the output force is greater than the input force. Because again, this is just a fraction. If we have a fraction that gives us a number greater than one, it means the numerator is greater than the denominator here. So if we have a mechanical advantage, like if we go back to the example of the mechanical advantage of five, that would mean that the output force, if it's five, the input force would have to be one, right? So we, we end up with a number here that's bigger than the number on the bottom, all right? So we could, we could have any ratio here, right? We could have 10 for the output force, and then the input force would have to be two, because that would also give us this mechanical advantage of five. All right, so either way, the number on top, the numerator, is bigger than the number on the bottom if the mechanical advantage is greater than one. All right, so the last case here, and you can kind of follow how this is going, if the mechanical advantage is less than one, what does that mean about the output force and input force? So again, if you want to pause the video and think about this, what a mechanical advantage less than one would mean is that the output force is less than the input force. All right, so if the mechanical advantage is less than one, let's say maybe it's one half, right? We could kind of just take this straight over and we could say if the output force is one, then the input force would be two because that would give us one half. Either way, the output force here is less than the input force on the bottom. All right, so then in terms of the forces, what this means, if the mechanical advantage, if it equals one, that tells us that the output force equals the input force. If the mechanical advantage is greater than one, that tells us, I'll draw an arrow there, that tells us that the output force is greater than the input force. This, this, this signals here that we're getting more work out, or sorry, sorry, more force out of the machine than we put into it, all right? Like we said in the, uh, and actually we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute, you cannot have work that's greater than what you put into a machine. But the force, that's what we're talking about here with mechanical advantage, is the force, we're getting more force out of the machine than we put into it, all right? And the last case here, if the mechanical advantage is less than one, what that tells us is that the output force is less than the input force. So in other words, we're not getting as much force out of the machine as we put into it. So we're, we're getting some other advantage from the machine uh, like we said in the last video, we could have the machine change the direction of the force maybe, or maybe it changes the distance that the force acts over. So all, all three of these cases would be possibilities for different values of the mechanical advantage. All right, so using the mechanical advantage formula, 
Uh, why don't you try out these examples here? Uh, again, the formula is mechanical advantage equals output force over input force. All right, so try these three examples out, pause the video, see if you can come up with the answers on your own, and uh, then come back uh, to get the answers uh, checked from the video. All right, so the, the first example here, if we go to solve this, we want to just use the mechanical advantage formula here. All right, so plugging in down here, we would have the mechanical advantage, what we're looking for would be the output force. Here it says we have 100 Newton force that we get out of the machine. So that's going to be our output force here. The input force says we put 30 newtons into the machine, so the input force was 30 newtons. All right. So to solve this here, all we have to do is divide. We already have mechanical advantage isolated on the left side there, so we would get 3.3 for the mechanical advantage. So you might be curious here, what are the units for mechanical advantage? Well, if we look at this here, we have newtons as the units for the output force here, and we have newtons as the units for the input force here. So in this case, newtons on the top of the fraction and newtons on the bottom of the fraction will cancel out, and that leaves us with mechanical advantage being unitless. So mechanical advantage, it's just a ratio. It has no units. So the mechanical advantage is 3.3 here. We don't need to put any units on that. That's, that's our final answer. All right, the second example here. Same formula with the mechanical advantage equaling the output force over the input force. So here it says we put 350 newtons of force into the machine. So if we're going to do output force over input force equals mechanical advantage, then the input force here is 350. And the output force says we get 175 newtons of force out of the machine. So 175 newtons is the output force. So then if we go to divide these to get the mechanical advantage, this would give us a mechanical advantage of 0.5. So again, this has no units, it's unitless. So if we compare the first example here to the second example, we got a mechanical advantage of less than 1. So going back to what we talked about on the first slide, if it's less than 1, that means that we're putting more work in than we're getting out. So we're not getting as much work out of the machine as we put in that agrees with these numbers that we have over here. Right? We, we got uh, 350 newtons here for our input force, but we only got 175 newtons of force out of the machine. Right? So a mechanical advantage of less than one, again, signifies that we have less force that we're getting out of the machine than we put into it. Whereas up here with this example, we had 3.3 for the mechanical advantage. That shows us, because this is greater than one, that shows us that we got more force out of the machine than we put into it. All right, so here we put 30 newtons of force in, we got 100 newtons of force out, that's, that's obviously a lot greater. So that means that we have a mechanical advantage greater than one. All right, this last example here, it's a little different. We have uh, 80 newtons of force put into a machine, so this is our input force, and then we have a mechanical advantage of seven. What is the output force? So we have to plug into the formula here. We have mechanical advantage is output force over input force. We have here the mechanical advantage is given to us as 7. So we know 7 equals the output force, which we don't know, divided by the input force, which we know is 80 newtons. All right, so to solve this here, we want to isolate output force here by getting it by itself on the equation. So we have to get rid of this 80. Again, we'll do the opposite of what it's doing. It's being divided here, so the opposite would be multiplication. So cancel that out, and we have to do the same thing to both sides. So if we take this over here, we should get 560 for the output force. So you might be thinking to yourself, does this have units? Well, we said mechanical advantage up here didn't have units, but that's not what we're measuring here. So here we're measuring the output force, right? So we've talked about in the force and motion unit, that the unit for force is newtons. So this, this needs to have newtons as the unit for our answer here. All right, so mechanical efficiency, and this formula got kind of uh, a little messed up there. Uh, so the formula for mechanical efficiency is work output. That's what's kind of crossed out here. So work output divided by work input times 100%. So a couple of differences here that are important to note with the mechanical efficiency formula. Here, we're comparing how much work we get out of the machine compared to how much work 
we put into it. All right, so with mechanical advantage, we were comparing the force. With mechanical efficiency, we're comparing the work. All right, so the work output and the work input instead of the force output and the force input. And another difference here is that we multiply by 100% to make it a percentage. So you would say that a machine is 80% efficient. That means you're getting 80% of the work that you put into it, you're getting 80% of that work out from the machine. All right. So machines are never 100% efficient. And so maybe, maybe think about why this might be. We kind of talked about it in class a little bit. So if you want to pause the video and maybe think about reasons why real machines would not be 100% efficient. All right, so the, the reason that machines are never 100% efficient is because of friction. So if we have a real machine uh, and we think about maybe like an engine, engine, engines are very complex machines, but if we think about the engine parts, they're all made of metal and they would be rubbing together as, as the engine moves, right? So there's gonna be friction between the metal parts that are rubbing together. So the work that's put into the engine is not going to equal the work that's, that you get out of it. You're, you're gonna get less work out because friction is basically gonna steal some of that work that you did uh, and it's gonna be lost to heat energy. You can think if you rub your hands together, uh, you, you create friction and that creates heat. All right, so we'll, we'll talk more later in the year about how that works, how, how friction can, can basically steal energy from things. But uh, for now, just know that friction, friction is what limits machines and makes them less than 100% efficient. So no machine can have greater than 100% efficiency. We talked about in the last video, you can never get more work out than you put in. And in real life, you can realistically only get less work out than you put in. You'll never be able to achieve 100% efficiency because friction is always going to steal some of that work. All right, so we could try a couple of examples here. One example of mechanical efficiency. So we have a machine that does 450 joules of work when you put 550 joules of work into it. All right, so what is its efficiency? So mechanical efficiency equals the output work or the work output divided by the input work times 100%. So in this case, we have the output work that the, the machine actually does is 450 joules. And the input work here is 550 joules. All right, so when we go to divide this, we again have to multiply by 100 to make it a percentage here. All right, so when we do uh, 450 divided by 550, it should give us roughly 0.9 here. All right, sorry, 0.8. Oops. Roughly 0.8, it's probably going to be more like 0.82. I don't have a calculator in front of me, so you can get a more exact answer for yourself. But when we divide these, we'll get 0.8, and then we just have to multiply by 100%. So you, you should end up with roughly here 80% efficiency. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is a quick, a quick think about it here. For, for machines, lubricating them oil with oil will improve their efficiency. So in light of what we just talked about, about why machines are not 100% efficient, think about why lubricating machines in, with oil would improve, improve their efficiency. All right, so pause the video, come up with an answer, and come back. All right, so the, the reason that we lubricate things with oil, lubricate machines with oil to improve their efficiency is because it reduces friction. So in this case, if, if you think about, uh, you, you know, you put oil in your car because that's lubricating the engine so that the parts are gonna rub together a little more smoothly, not be as affected by friction. So that's the reason that we lubricate things. Your, your bike chain you might lubricate, all right? So anything that we're lubricating with oil, any machine, it's most likely because we're trying to reduce the friction on that machine. So that way friction will be lower, it won't steal as much of the work that we put into it, and you'll end up with uh, a higher efficiency percentage there. All right, thanks for watching this video on advantage and efficiency, and I'll see you in the next video.